Hey everybody, it's Lon Seidman and we're taking a look today at a router. We haven't looked at routers in a while here on the channel and this is called the Norton Core. And this is another consumer focused router that is focused on security. So this is going to be something that uh, might not be of interest to the enthusiast crowd, but there are some things on here that uh, consumers who are concerned about their network security might want to be thinking about here. And this one implements it in a very simple way. Now, I do want to mention in the interest of full disclosure that this came in free of charge from Symantec, who makes this Norton router. However, all the opinions you're about to hear are my own. Nobody is paying for this review and no one has reviewed this content before it is uploaded. So let's get into this and see what it's all about. So let's take a closer look at the hardware. As a consumer device, this one is definitely more focused on Wi-Fi than Ethernet. So as a result, you only have three usable Ethernet ports on the product here. Uh, this fourth one is for your cable or DSL modem. So this is where the WAN goes. Uh, these are your LAN ports for the local area network and the rest will connect up via Wi-Fi. Uh, this does have four x four AC wireless. So if you have a new computer with a four x four radio, it'll be uh, pretty fast on on here. We'll double check the speed on this in a little bit as we get a little further into the review. And they designed this thing to look the way it does because they're thinking maybe you might want to put this more centrally located in your home for better Wi-Fi coverage. A lot of us kind of tuck our uh, routers into the closet because they're kind of ugly with all the antennas hanging off of it. And on this one, they decided to try to uh, give you something more attractive. There are two colors available too. So there's a gold one and uh, this color here. So if you are uh, looking for better Wi-Fi coverage, sometimes putting these things in a more centrally located portion of the house will do a little better. Uh, there's also so two USB ports here on the bottom. Uh, these really are not used on this product just yet. It, there is a option to have it work as a print server. So if you do want to connect a printer up to this and have it uh, manage that printer for you, you can do that. But at the moment, that's all I see those ports being used for. It does not appear that it yet supports uh, the ability to hook up external storage and have it work as a NAS. But who knows, it's got uh, the ability to do that probably down the road. But right now, it doesn't do any of that. And that is it for the hardware. There's not much here to talk about. It does have a 1.7 gigahertz dual core processor for uh, doing all the stuff that we'll be showing off here in a second related to security. Has a gigabyte of RAM, which is a little more than I typically see on a router, but it needs that for uh, some of the network packet inspection that it does. And the configuration was pretty simple because it does have a Bluetooth Bluetooth radio built in and when you first configure it, uh, you bring your mobile phone over to it, an iPhone or an Android phone uh, to get everything up and running. So the setup was actually pretty simple. There wasn't anything to log into. It just uh, detected my phone and let me uh, get it all set up from there. And note that you have to have that smartphone to manage the product. It does not work with a web-based control panel. So let's plug this in and see how it works and we'll do some testing and see how secure it really is. All right, so we got the router now connected up to the internet. The white light here at the bottom indicates we have a strong connection. And uh, when you load up the mobile app, the first thing you see is a security score because this is a personal security focused router and as such it's going to give you uh, constant recommendations for improving your security both coming in and out of your network and there are some things that it will give you uh, direct recommendations about other things you have to kind of figure out on your own they don't give you all the components of the score or what makes it up uh, so let's dig into this here for a second and we'll see some of the things that it's suggesting that we do uh, the first problem it detected is that we have a double network going on right now and uh, what's happening at the moment is that this is connected to my uh, internal network here and it's routing its internet traffic through my other router it detected that and says hey that's not a good idea i don't have complete control over your network and it's not guaranteeing me the perfect amount of security here as a result it also thinks my Wi-Fi passwords are too weak, and if I go in and change those passwords and follow their guide here, uh, that will improve my score as well. Now, with this being a Norton product, they also want you to install their software on your computers to improve the score. And if we jump over to uh, the Norton Security tab here, you can see that it has detected a bunch of computers on my network that don't have the Norton security software installed on them. If I were to install the software, that will improve my score. Now this does come with a monthly subscription fee like all of the other Norton software products do. It's waived for the first year. So this is a $279 product. You get a year subscription out of that. Afterward, it's a $10 per month subscription charge to keep its definitions up to date. If you don't pay the subscription, the security features stop working and it's just another uh, dumb router. So to keep that security thing going, you will need to uh, pay into that plan. Uh, but if you are already paying for Norton antivirus and Norton security on your computers, 
Uh, this might be a better value because part of that $10 per month is an unlimited license for every computer in your home to run the Norton Security software. So if you are using that software now, uh, this might be a better deal because you will get uh, everything covered for $10 a month versus whatever you're uh, paying at the moment. But if you don't want to install the software, you can lie to them and just say, I have Norton Security installed, and that will uh, take that computer off the list for the future. And I believe that uh, should also positively impact our score here. So we'll let that uh, process there. And now that that is done, we can go back up and see our score has jumped to 207. So you can see the impact of uh, getting either that thing clicked or putting the software on your computer to uh, better improve your score. So there is a way to game this a little bit to get a better score. But uh, at the end of the day, if you really don't want that software installed yet, uh, don't want your score impacted by that, you can get around it. But the real uh, value of this, I think, is some of its network packet inspection technology and some of the things that it does to make sure that you don't wander off into the wrong places. Uh, so I'm going to get my laptop out here and show you some examples of uh, what the router does when it finds things that might be a risk to you or your network. So to do some of this testing, I'm going to head over to amtso.org. And uh, what they do is uh, put up some files that universally are recognized as malicious by antivirus software and hardware, at least among the major manufacturers. These files are uh, benign and that they won't do anything to my network here, but they simulate the kinds of things that malware might do when trying to get inside of your network. Because one of the biggest problems I think we have with security at the moment is the fact that, uh, for the most part, most of these uh, big hacks that you read about are the result of somebody clicking on something that they shouldn't. And if you are somebody who's important within your organization and uh, somebody's eager to get access to that organization, one of the best ways to target you uh, is to go after your kids or other less tech-savvy people in the home that might be prone to clicking on things that could cause problems. And this site kind of simulates that happening. So they've got six different tests here. We'll just do a couple of them. Uh, we'll first do just a manual download of malware, like if we were clicking on a link that we should not have. So if I uh, click on this link right now and go over here to download the test file, uh, what should happen here is the Norton Core should detect that and uh, block us from getting that malicious content here. And as you can see here, uh, this site has been identified to have malicious content, and we have been uh, locked out of that. So the, the uh, Core here was able to do that. And if I jump over to the control panel here on my phone, you can see that uh, it blocked it an intrusion attempt and it tells me which computer was at fault. So uh, that might be something where if I get that notification pushed to my phone and I'm home or uh, not at home, I can call over to the kid and say, unplug your computer from the network. Do not turn it back on until I come home because uh, there is some uh, dangerous stuff happening there. So you do get a notification and uh, the uh, app here will update itself to say that it blocks some additional threats there. Uh, under extreme circumstances, and I'm, I'm not sure exactly what they are because they didn't give me any information on that, uh, is that if it's a a piece of malware that's especially dangerous that it detects, it will actually isolate that computer from the rest of the network automatically. So we'll take some proactive steps that don't require any human intervention to prevent any further infection on your local network. So uh, that's one example of some of the things that it can do. So let's back up now and take a look at another test. We're going to look at what's called a drive-by download. And we had this happen at my last job where uh, somebody on his lunch break just went to a message board that he would always go to on his lunch break, a non-malicious site. But that site was running advertisements. And there was a period of time, and it probably still happens occasionally, that somebody was able to uh, embed malicious content inside of an internet advertisement. It appeared on that message board. We had a vulnerability on the computer because we hadn't updated the Flash plugin on it, unfortunately. It was our fault. But nonetheless, it side downloaded this little application that self-executed as a result of that Flash thing. And uh, the next thing we knew, we had uh, ransomware on that computer that nearly got the entire network. And this router uh, will prevent some of that. So if I go over here to this drive-by download page, nothing should happen. So you can see here the page does come up, but it does attempt to download a 68-byte file, and it did not download here. So now I do want to show you some B-roll as to what happens on that page if you don't have some way to secure your network. You can see here it does download that file, whereas before here with the Norton Core, it did not. It will also register another notification on my uh, mobile app here. And I did run this a few times earlier, and uh, there we go. We've got a, a couple of uh, little warnings here that 
that it attempted to download that file. Unfortunately, you don't know what it was trying to download or where the person went, but you do know, again, that the computer that uh, it's pointing to was our problem there. So it does uh, protect us against that kind of thing. Uh, let's try one more on here, and let's back up to their list of things. You should try uh, maybe running this on your own network as a good way to see if your router is uh, keeping you safe on things. So we're going to try this protection against accessing a phishing page. I'm going to click on that. And what should happen now is it should uh, not let us go to this page. So let's click on this link and see what happens here. And it looks like it didn't pass this test. So it doesn't seem like it's getting this particular phishing thing, but it did protect us against some of the malware stuff. And uh, really what this comes down to is the definition updates, very similar to what your antivirus software downloads constantly. This thing is also constantly updated for uh, other malicious links that might be appearing, and they do try to keep up with that. Uh, it's not going to be perfect here, as you can see, at least with this test page. It didn't work, but uh, it did catch a lot of the other stuff that we did, uh, certainly much better than a dumb router might. But the big question is, how does having all of this network protection in place impact your network performance? Well, it's a little complicated. Let's take a look. So let's start things off with a speed test that I just ran. You can see here we got downstream speeds of 232 megabits per second from uh, this server in Providence, Rhode Island. This is about the max that my connection can handle, along with 12 megabits per second on the upstream. So on first appearance here, everything looks like it ran just fine. But check this out. We're going to switch to a different server and see what kind of results we get from there. So let's change servers now. We're going to go to this one in Garden City, New York called webair.com. We're going to go ahead and start the test here. And uh, what you're going to see now is a difference in speed, a pretty significant difference in speed, especially on the downstream. And uh, the reason why this is happening is that uh, the router here has a database of trusted networks that it gets from uh, Norton headquarters. And if the place you're going is not part of that trusted network, it's going to apply some packet inspection to every packet going in and out of the device. I think it might uh, maybe skip a few of them, but by and large, it's going to do uh, some tighter inspection of the traffic going in and out to make sure that it doesn't line up with any uh, behavior that you might affiliate with malware. So you can see here that uh, on the download speeds, we were a lot slower than we were on the other server. But uh, here's the interesting thing. If we go back over to the app here, I'm going to just show you where I'm uh, going here. Uh, to the settings screen, we're going to go over to security and then select network inspection. Uh, right now, I have it on default. But I'm going to switch this off here just to make sure that uh, we're not dealing with any internet problems here, that this really is the packet inspection. So when you turn this off, uh, all of this network packet inspection stops for 30 minutes. So now it's working just kind of as a dumb router with no uh, oversight as to what's happening on your network. And now that we have turned off that packet ins inspection, we're on the same server here. We're going to click Go now and watch the difference here between having our network packets inspected and not. So let's let that connect here. And we're going to see a very different speed result off of that same server. So here goes the test. And you can see now uh, we're getting back to where we were on the other server. So that other server looks like it was part of that trusted database of uh, networks. Uh, this webair.com in Garden City, New York, is not part of those trusted networks. And you will see some speed differences depending on where you're going. And as a result of this, if you've got kids in the house that are playing a lot of online games or something like that, you might see some performance impacts if the networks they're connecting to are not trusted by by Symantec. And unfortunately, there's no way to, at the moment, uh, whitelist any networks to allow the full speed to come through. You can disable that packet inspection. But again, as a consumer-focused device, they're going to limit that uh, to only 30-minute stretches at a time. So just bear that in mind. If you've got a lot of critical things that depend on the utmost in performance, you may not always see the utmost performance here uh, because of some of the network packet inspection that this device does. And if you want the most protection, you can have it not use that trusted site list by by clicking on the advanced option at the top of the list here, but they uh, do recommend going with the default. So I think you'll see, again, varying performance depending on where the site you're connecting to is uh, at with Symantec's database of trusted sites. And there is no way, again, to uh, find out who is and who isn't on that list. It's more of a trial and error thing. That's uh, partly for security reasons. Let's browse through a few other things that we have on here. You can set up guest networks, of course. 
Uh, you can do things like uh, change your DNS if you wish. So right now it's on the Norton Secure DNS, but you can change to your ISP's DNS or use Google uh, or New Star Advantage. And uh, you might end up seeing some differences in your score on this one, depending on which one you choose. I was having a little bit of an issue with uh, the Norton Secure DNS a little earlier, but it seems to be working fine now. Uh, you do have some other features like port forwarding and UPnP settings as well. So you can do some basic tasks that you might do on another router if you've got things that you wish to uh, connect into your network with. I'm sure those might impact your score too if you uh, do something it doesn't like. Uh, if you scroll down to the list here, we have some other options for uh, changing the brightness of the light at the bottom there. You can do some uh, restarts and resets from here. And this app will work whether you are at home or away. So you do have the ability to manage the router and uh, do things to it when you're not home should you get a security notification while you are away. They also have some pretty granular parental controls on here too. I'll just show you that real quick. We'll browse over to people. I can go here and add somebody. We'll call this person the kid and we'll go to here to next and we can set uh, filters based on their age. So for example, if I've got a, a less than eight year old, it will block all the things that you can see here on the list, but you can uh, add or remove things as you wish from there. And then if they are uh, browsing the web on one of the devices that you've assigned to them, uh, it will not let them look at those sites. The database is maintained by Symantec. They will update it on a frequent basis. I think you do have some ability to uh, keep your own uh, blacklist of sites as well. So you have some things that you can add yourself or you can also just rely uh, on their database to make sure your kids don't go places they shouldn't. And you also have a good degree of device management on here. So if you go over to devices on the app, you can see everything that's currently connected to the network and everything that has been connected to the network. So the next time, for example, that this desktop computer shows up, it will have all of these settings. Uh, now, managed is selected right now because I have assigned that device over here to the kid, as you can see uh, towards the bottom there. So this will uh, be following the rules that we set up in that parental notification there. I could turn management off though, and that would uh, make it just like any other device on the network. There's also some quality of service here, so I could turn this on and that would give a higher priority to that computer uh, over others on the network. So if it is playing a game and uh, those packets need to get out a little bit ahead of some of the other stuff that might be happening on the network, it'll give that device priority. But I do believe your uh, network packet inspection will take priority over that. So it still will, I think, inspect the packets if it's not a trusted network, but uh, you can try to give them a little bit of a boost for uh, some of their gaming. I also like the fact that I can go in here and just rename this because right now this is the name that uh, Windows gave that computer, but I could just name this thing to be called Kid. So the ne next time the kid logs in, I know uh, which computer it is that might be causing trouble on my network. And one last thing to check out on this before we close this out is a Wi-Fi benchmark test. And what we're gonna do is have this MacBook Pro, which has got the fastest wireless radio I have in the house at the moment. It's going to connect through the router, which is then going to pass its data uh, over to this MacBook Air via ethernet. So we're directly hardwired with this machine uh, up to the router. This one is connecting wirelessly. So let's switch over to the MacBook Pro and push some packets over to that MacBook Air and we can see what kind of speeds we get here. Uh, so right off the bat, we're getting close to 800 megabits per second in a perfect uh, scenario here right next to the router, but uh, that's a very good speed. In fact, it's among the fastest I have tested here on the channel. Uh, that's due in part to the fact that we have a new modern laptop here with a very fast AC wireless radio and of course a fast AC wireless radio located in the router itself. So that's gonna do it for the Norton Core router. And like many other consumer friendly routers we've looked at recently, this does take a lot of control away from the user insofar as network administration is concerned. But I think for a lot of consumers, they don't wanna be bothered with any of that. They just want it to work. And this will certainly do uh, that task as well as some of those other devices do. Uh, but this one does add in a layer of security in that it's being constantly updated with uh, definitions that uh, look for malware that might be coming across the internet to your computers and trying to stop those things from spreading. And this might be really important if you are in any kind of position of importance at a company or government organization. Obviously, people might look to uh, do spear phishing attacks against the weakest point in those particular institutions, which would be the homes of the principals of those companies. And if you got kids, there's a good chance one of those kids might click on a link and the next thing you know, you've got yourself an international incident. This might help prevent against those kinds of things. I would love to actually do some testing of this to see uh, what real malicious content might do with it. I mean, maybe I'll try to find some way to do that without infecting my network here. I'm eager to try that out. But I think on 
the surface here. Uh, it will provide added protection that many other routers won't. And if that's a concern for you, uh, this will probably give you some protection and some additional peace of mind. I'm not all that crazy about products that come with a monthly fee to continue operating. Uh, you do get a year of usage out of this before you have to start paying that fee. And again, there might be a better value here with the subscription, especially if you're already paying for Norton software. You'll have an unlimited number of computers that you can install their software on after installing this router and starting your subscription with them. So yeah, it's got a monthly fee, but there might be some value to that, especially given how often it's going to be updated with uh, new information. But you as the consumer will have to decide whether or not it is worth uh, your money to have that ongoing relationship. So that's going to do it for the Norton Core router. Let me know what you thought down in the comments below, and we'll try to do some more with this in the coming weeks if we can find some way to safely uh, test some of the more uh, severe security threats that might come your way. This is Lon Seidman. Thanks for watching. This channel is brought to you by my Patreon supporters, including Gold Level supporters, the Black Eyed and Blues Music Hour podcast, Chris Allegretta, John Prawl, William Miller, and Kalyan Kumar. If you want to help the channel, you can by contributing as little as a dollar a month. Head over to lon.tv slash Patreon to learn more. And don't forget to subscribe. Visit lon.tv slash s.